Dr. Abdallah Hadi Mohammed was part of the team of neurosurgeons with the Kolebutishin Hospital who worked to save the life of Babli Michael Isyama, who had a promising future. We all struck a very good chord with Michael because it was a fun to be with, you know, and I became very close uh, to him. Uh, it was more like a son. And even in pain, he would try to read around his condition. And I was actually shocked when Michael could explain in details uh, the type of surgery that he was supposed to undergo. But the unfortunate happened. We felt that he was doing very well on that Friday. Uh, he was in his jovial manner, interacting very well with everybody. And um, so I left him and then uh, went home. Um, only later on to be called that Michael had gone into some cardiac arrest. You know, he eventually um, we lost him. Okay, resuscitation was instituted. Everybody on the ward, including the floor of the ward, was was uh, calling to come and assist. You know, and and the mother, I'm sure, narrated the extent to which. Uh, we were disadvantaged uh, in places on the wall to like manage uh, emergencies like that. This appears to be generating controversy on whether or not the doctors failed or the system in the facility failed young Michael. Currently, I say we have enough doctors, neurosurgeons in Kolewu, Probably the highest you'll find anywhere in West Africa. Remember Liberia just celebrated having their first neurosurgeon last year. So most countries in West Africa lack neurosurgeon. We have one in Tamale. Uh, we have uh, about three or four in Konfanochi. And then uh, one uh, in Ridge Hospital. And then there's one at uh, UJMC. And an active one at... Um, 37 military hospital and one in Cape Coast. So the numbers are few, but the major problem for us has to do with the space to work and then the equipment and then critical care because most of our cases need critical care. They are not patients like maybe cesarean section, they operate and then you go or hernia. You finish and then the person goes to the ward. If you touch somebody's brain, or some part of the spine, you need to keep the patient in an intensive care. So intensive or critical care is part of neurosurgery. And you, you could see that most of our uh, conditions that we treat, especially with the brain, can lead to increased pressures. So the patient needs to be under monitoring, usually for about 42 to 72 hours. But because of the inadequacies, uh, that we have, especially with the intensive care unit, we are unable to keep this patient as long as we can. Dr. Abdullah, who regretted the passing of Kofi Siama, said the boy's death would have been avoided if the hospital was equipped with needed modern equipment. Thus, he said, would have given Michael the opportunity to fulfill his dreams. Dr. Abdullah is advocating the establishment of a specialized neurosurgical center at the hospital. This country needs a neuroscience center. The statistics on the ground clearly shows that we need it. If you look at our road accidentally, invariably anybody who is riding a motorbike, which is now becoming the major cause of road traffic accident in our country, or in terms of fatality, invariably most of them will develop head injury. Sometimes they bleed, they bleed into the brain. And you can imagine the person is say in Boku or in Wa or in Sunyani and need to be brought to Accra within four hours to have the surgery, else his chances of survival is low. It takes days to bring them and they put them in an ambulance. By the time they come, the bleed has even expanded. The patient is in bad condition. They get to Accra. Because we are all using accident center, we don't have the neuroscience center. If accident center is choked by other cases, it means that guy cannot enter. The key point of this conversation is the need for government to prioritize equipping and resourcing specialized facilities in our hospitals.
reporting for City News. I am Na Adoli Morfat.